Hi everyone. <clears throat> Thank you for joining us today for our live demo series and this is where we, we will present recent data breaches or hacks, how they were executed, and what you can do to remedy this from happening in the future. Today we'll actually be presenting a recent data breach that affected hundreds of millions of client records. This application is actually a prison phone service app released by a company called Telmate. And what we learned from this is that while each part of a full application stack is important to secure, leaving an exposed public database can be a really big error and it can severely hurt your client's anonymity as well as violate several data privacy regulations. Most of the time we'll be talking about hacker compromise systems, but today this is actually just an example of an op a database that was left open on the internet. Um, this is a mistake that can happen to anyone, and it happens almost every day. So let's begin. So modern apps are collecting more data than ever before. We're familiar with this as we're consenting to the data collection with pop-ups and other uh, forms that were presented in apps or on web. And this has been extended over time, even despite regulations and policies like GDPR and CCPA. Um, and, you know, this in this situation that we'll be talking about today, uh, this is actually a paid app. And even despite it being paid, they were still collecting more data than they needed to collect. Um, and some apps collect more information than is needed, but the question is, is it harmful or unfair to the user? Is it done in a fair way? Is it done in a regulated way? Those are the questions that you need to ask yourself if you're developing an app and you're collecting data. <clears throat> so the company Telme is actually a subsidiary of Global Telink. Uh, and these are the two apps that we'll be talking about today. The one on the left is used for prisoners to communicate with their contacts while inside prison. Uh, the one on the right is for parolees to basically track their whereabouts. And uh, this app would effectively determine whether they go back to prison or not. And so let's look at some of the headlines that came out about uh, these apps. So the first one was back in April of 2020 of this year, and they had reported errors in the Guardian app. This was the app for parolees, where it was tracking a lot of GPS data on the user. Um, it was actually, they found it was tracking ambient audio without permission, and it had a couple of errors like that on the client side. Uh, at the same time, in this article, they had reported that uh, Telmate was testing the Getting Out app on Amazon S3 bucket and that they had a misconfigured Amazon S3 bucket that they had used when they were testing their app. Uh, this, is, this was the first error where they had an unsecured database. Um, and then now, back in September of 2020, which was about a month ago, they found this unsecured database on the internet. And the question is, how was this even found? Like, was there a hacker? In this case, no, there was no hacker. Uh, but the database, it being public and unsecured on the internet, it was found by, there are several sites out there that are constantly scanning the web and looking for this kind of private information. And uh, this happens more than you might realize. So a small mistake on the app developer side can lead to uh, a lot of uh, issues for their clients. And uh, we should also keep in mind that Telme is servicing 300 prisons in the U.S. and Canada. So this is uh, a big issue as it's a highly used app and they had unsecured uh, assets. And even in 2015, this article had come out saying that prisons do record more inmate calls than they should. So we might wonder if, you know, the app Developers had an agreement with the prisons because they were agreeing to track some data for uh, for people to monitor. However, the fact that it leaked outside of the prison system is a big concern. So we're looking at data on the order of millions, 11 million contacts, 78 million administrative records, 227 million messaging records. This is a lot of data, and it makes sense given how many prisons they service and how many downloads they have and the fact that the Guardian app is required by parolees to determine whether they would go back to prison or not. 
Um, now, one of the things I hadn't mentioned in the previous article was that the code was regarded as sloppy and irresponsible. This is something that you never want with your company. You never want to have a tech news outlet mention that your code is sloppy and irresponsible. That's really going to hurt your reputation. And so this is one of the things that could have been avoided, and we'll talk about how. So first, let's really talk about what information exactly was leaked. So as you can see, as you're going through this app, uh, you have a login, you have messages, you have photos, and you're also paying uh, to talk to your contacts. And so in each of these points, there were information that was leaked. And this is what the, the data looked like <clears throat> in the database that was posted publicly on the internet. So you can see that there is information about the inmate, which facility they're at, and it, there's also information about their contacts on the bottom, their street address, where they live, and then what we can't see here is their phone name and um, their message status, like if the message went through or if it didn't, things like that. So the takeaway here is that there was leaked personal data due to these unsecured databases it actually happened twice. And this really calls for the importance of a full stack security program. And one other thing to mention here is perhaps, you know, perhaps that this was due to the fact that they are contracting their coding efforts to a third party overseas. But really, there's nothing wrong with outsourcing code. The issue is if you don't have a clear security policy and requirement in place, then your contractors will be making the decisions on your behalf. So you never want to give that to your CISO. You never want to give that authority to your contracted firm. Uh, you want to be the one to make those decisions or at least to set the precedent. So let's talk a little bit about how they could have improved. Uh, so first of all, with this login, uh, on the client side, requiring two-factor authentication, uh, requiring PCI-regulated payment information, uh, requiring even messages that are encrypted because, as you could see, the message was just uh, posted in plain text on the database. And for the database itself, how do you make sure that this stays secure? So if you're using an Amazon S3 bucket, you can make sure that uh, you have authentication and authorization turned on. Uh, we've seen many, many cases where these are left open and unsecured. And in the second situation with Telmate, they actually had their unsecured database on the public web. It probably wasn't Amazon S3 bucket, but earlier in the year in April, they did have that issue as well. Uh, on the client side, storing keys in the app is is a could be an error. And since you have all these APIs communicating data from your client side to the cloud, uh, that really creates opportunity for attack, uh, man-in-the-middle attacks, finding out which APIs you're using, finding out what the name of your database is or the address or what network and so on. That, rec that leads to hacks uh, where the, the hacker can pull data directly. In this case, since it was on the public web, it was very easy for them to do it if they had if there was a hacker targeting Telmate. Um, now, fortunately for Telmate, they were able to fix this fairly quickly uh, because it was posted. Someone found it, notified them, and they fixed it within a day. But even within a day, uh, you know, we don't know how long the database was exposed prior to it being indexed. So maybe some kind of a third party could have indexed information. We don't know who else accessed it during that time. So there's research that shows that unsecured databases can be accessed and attacked within only a few hours of exposure. So it's really, really important to cover your bases here. So let's talk a little bit about what we do at Data Theorem and how we can potentially help. So uh, this is how we define full stack architecture for a modern application. Now, as you can see, it starts from a client layer with a mobile or web application. And mobile would be iOS or Android, and web would be these modern web apps that are actually like dynamically loading in a page, which is different from 
what used to be multiple page applications where you had several pages generated over time. This is a single page application, that's modern architecture. And then you might have dozens of API services, sometimes they're natively owned by the publisher of the app itself, but oftentimes leveraging third parties like SDK services, open source services, or libraries, and we find a variety of other microservices that can enhance the application. So now we're looking at a mix of first party and third party APIs. Typically they're done with Rust, but now we're seeing things like GraphQL as well. And then below the APIs, now they're being hosted heavily in public cloud uh, with technologies that are new and, and oftentimes using different microservices and uh, different cloud service provider building blocks is what we call it, things like you know the Amazon S3 buckets that we talked about earlier. And so let's talk a little bit about our products. So we actually have products, we have a mobile secure product, web secure product, API secure product, and um, I'll talk a little bit about API secure today. Um, all of the products run on this thing that we call the Data Theorem Analyzer Engine, where uh, we're discovering your assets across the public web and in the cloud. And then we're trying to figure out where these can be hacked, where are their vulnerabilities, and how can these assets be attacked. And then finally, we'll help you remediate very simply by providing secure code suggestions and other things like that. And so if we dig into the discovery phase, the API product will begin inventorying all of your existing public APIs, API domains, single page applications, cloud assets, and we'll even check private APIs here. Um, and then we do something called asset grouping where you can uh, group all of these assets into different projects. So uh, depending on how many applications you have, you might want to do uh, more or less of these groups. And that will then help you determine what policies you want to enable. So let's say you're more, most concerned about shadow assets in the cloud. So you can create one group where it's constantly scanning and would up level any vulnerabilities that have to do with that. And so that's where during inspection, you can really enforce your custom policies. And that's where we'll evaluate for leaky data. But then we also have hacking toolkits. Um, we use attack tools called hack and extract and detect and inject. And these tools run against your inventory that was uncovered in the discover phase. So during hack and extract, we'll try authentication and authorization hacking attacks against your policy to see if we can extract private data out. And during detect, detect and inject, we'll actually you'll be able to configure SQL injection attacks. And so any of the policy violations would be verified here. Now, moving on to remediation, this is where you can really take action. And so we'll provide a list of all of your issues, P1s, P2s, and we sort them by high, medium, or low priorities. And you'll get alerts here. You can set up Slack alerts if you want. Uh, JIRA tickets can be auto-generated here as well. And we'll provide uh, remediation options, including secure code suggestions here. So you can click on the issue, inspect it, see what code you need to replace uh, in your code base, and we'll provide that option. We'll also give you information about the actual violation. And then you can actually produce reports. So whether you're trying to prepare for your next audit, uh, we do create compliance reports, or uh, if you want to have a bird eye view of everything that the product has generated about your application, you can do that here as well. 